Hello and welcome to another episode of Energy Express. I'm your host, Zach Harrell. We're going to begin today's episode with our friend Misha Poor. She's WVU's Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And today she's going to talk to us about service. Hello friends, Misha Poor here, Vice President for the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at West Virginia University. Let's talk. Today, let's talk about service, one of WVU's core values. Service, at the very heart of what it means, is to be your best self while lifting up others. We need to serve others in a way that helps them be their best selves too. Service is about showing up and using your gifts and your talents to help others. Everything we do should serve the common good, whether it is choosing what we want to do when we grow up or everyday interaction with the people in our lives, our connections with our community, family, and friends. Looking for and acting on those opportunities to serve one another is important. When you and your friends finish an activity, can you help put away supplies? I think you can. At home, can you look for ways to help out without being asked? I think you can. When you notice somebody has been left out, can you say hello and invite them to join you and your friends? Well, I think you can. We all play a role as we go about our daily tasks in this mutual pouring into one another. We must give our very best, the very best of ourselves and interrupt anything that prevents others from being their best selves too. That is service. Like they say, when you know better, you do better and we all can do better. See you next time. Now let's head over to the WVU Police Department, where we'll learn about what it's like to be a university police officer. We begin with officers Roy Harper and Matt Carr, who are going to show us some of the equipment they use on the job. <laughs> Hi, I'm Roy Harper. Uh, this is Matt Carr. We're West Virginia University police officers uh, located in Morgantown, West Virginia. And today we're going to show some of our gear that we use every day in our work. We're going to start with top to bottom and explain and show you what he is wearing. At the top is a baseball hat. Officers can wear baseball hats with general duty uniform. That is, on a bright sunny day like this, the officers could wear a ball cap to keep, help keep the sun out of their eyes. Working all the way down, you will see all this is his body armor. Officers could wear an outer body carrier where they could carry all their tools that they use for work. Most important they wear is they will have their badge that identify who they are, where they work, for their authority. The next thing is all officers will carry and wear a body camera so when they are talking to anybody they can activate it and keep a record of what is transpiring. The next you can see on the body cam area is again they have logos saying that they are police flashlight even in the daytime you got to use a flashlight because you might go in a building that is dark then you have your pepper spray your handcuffs and extra ammo in case you need then the officer will have his regular duty bell with his radio so he keep in touch with dispatch or any officers at any time then on his other side he has what they call a baton that he could use as a weapon if he needs to. And his last resort is his firearm for his safety and protect other people. And he has a glove pouch because officers will wear gloves when they're handling objects or drugs. Uh, Western University Police has their own patch that will identify their, their university and also everybody in the state of West Virginia recognize the WV logo and the Mountaineer and will identify a place not only in Morgantown but anywhere in the state of West Virginia that is a university campus 
will use the same patch. Uh, you also see officers will have different insignias underneath. That is their rank. This rank with one stripe from a rocker will indicate Officer Carr is a senior officer. This is a standard police car that we use. It is a Ford SUV. Most police departments are now using this make and model to us. You will see it has our decals and our special logo, same as our patch. Uh, we have two types of vehicles. You will have vehicles that are fully marked with light bars and we'll have the same vehicle that does not have any lights or decals on it, which is usually used for administrative uses. Uh, you'll see right here, this little thing here, this is actually a spotlight for officers for nighttime if they need to check on stuff and they uh, don't even get out of the car, they could use this spotlight. Uh, all the vehicles are equipped just like we are with radio, sirens, and lights that we could use at any time we need to. And this unit has what we call a pursuit switch. It is one switch will activate all lights and sirens. And if we have to, we have... The reason we have different tones is if there's heavy traffic, and we need to go through traffic lights, we have to slow down and use the two-tone sirens to get the attention of traffic. So the we and the public stay safe while we're going through traffic. This is any police officer. This is his office. If he works eight or 10 hours a day, he's going to spend the vast majority all day in this vehicle. It, some cars has an onboard computer they could do stuff with right there. You got your radios, everything. Basically you're in this vehicle, this is your mobile office all day long. These are put in here for going through cross traffic and intersections. This is our standard two-way radio where we keep in touch with our dispatch. Not only can we keep in touch with our dispatch, the officer could hit one button, which would put what we call a scan mode. Basically, I could hear and monitor the city, all city police, the county sheriff, and the state police, so I know what's going on all around me at all times. This is our siren, which also has its own microphone. This is our pursuit switch, which in off, They'll just turn on basic lights. All the way, then I'll have all lights and sirens. Our switch here, I could change what siren tone I need, or if I'm going through traffic, I could have to go through heavy traffic to uh, let the cars know I need to get through. We have what we call a lock box. This box will carry what we call, in police work, a patrol rifle. Sometimes, if it's really necessary, we have a capability of having a rifle instead of a handgun if we need it. Uh, I have to go bag that the officer can grab when he takes this with extra ammo, as well as First aid kits, fire extinguishers. This, a lot of people, is used for if we have to get into a vehicle, open a vehicle. If you lock your keys in there, and actually there's been a few times, years ago, I've had to, people has uh, locked their keys in the car with their child in the car seat. And we needed to get the car open with the child because it was a small child in a car seat. And that's the standard equipment.
Now that we've met some human police officers, what about some furrier ones? Let's catch up with Lieutenant Josh Cook, who will introduce us to members of WVU's K-9 Police Unit. Hi, I'm Josh Cook. I'm a lieutenant with uh, West Virginia University Police Department. I do uh, emergency planning and chemical explosives canine searches. I became a canine officer. Uh, it's something I always wanted to do. And uh, I got the opportunity to, to learn and go to school to become a canine officer. So I jumped on that opportunity and it's been a very rewarding career. When I got the opportunity to be a canine officer, I had to go away to school for several months. Take a puppy when they're small and the, they have to learn obedience. And after they learn obedience, then you can build upon that and you can start doing scent work um, so we can teach the dogs to use their nose to find dangerous things. A common misconception is that uh, only German Shepherds are police dogs and only police dogs are attack dogs. And that's not the truth. Any dog can be a police dog as long as it has hunt and drive. And it's all positive reinforcement, everything we do. Everything is because they want to do it. It's just a fun game for the dogs. Uh, when we go out and we actually search for the dangerous things, when they use their nose and find it, what they'll do is they'll set. And when they set, I throw them a toy. So it's just basically a, a, a want to play the game. Uh, when the dogs are not working, they're, they live with me and my family. Um, I have kids, they hang out with my kids. My young son is the one that named the, uh, one of my dogs. So, I mean, they're a very integral part of my family. They're just like normal dogs when you go home. All right, I have two dogs here I want to introduce you to, uh, Nina and Ginger, uh, both females. They're aunt and niece. And uh, this is Ginger. She's a little older than Nina. Nina's the younger one. Um, and as you can see, their car is specially made for the dogs. That way they can stay safe. Um, it has a special water system. It has special cages. It has a special fan. And it has a, a system in it if the car gets too hot the windows will automatically roll down, the fan will come on, that way we can keep the dogs nice and cool. All right, one of the things we do, uh, I do this about every day, is I set out a couple boxes, usually three boxes. They're wooden boxes, they're here behind me. And I put a training aid in one of them. The other boxes don't have anything in them. So what I'll do is I'll get the dogs out and I'll have them search. And they'll use their nose and they'll check all the boxes. And when they find the dangerous item, they'll set down. And when they set down, I'll throw them a toy. The uh, box all the way at the end, it's the one that has the training aid in it. Ready? Go find it. Let's go. Go check the boxes. Go find it. Go find it. Show me. Show me. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, Ginger. What drives our dogs is, uh, both dogs I have, is just, they want to please, number one, and it's just a fun game. Let's go, over here. Come on, over here. All right, come on. Here, ready? Ready? Let's go find it, go. Show me. Good girl, good girl, Nina. Good girl. I want to thank you guys for visiting us today and uh, I hope you have a good day. Now Sergeant Brock Armstrong is going to give us a tour of the University Police Department and introduce us to Chief Sherry St. Clair, WVU's first female police chief. I'm Brock Armstrong, Sergeant. I'm the co training coordinator here at the University Police Department. I've been a police officer going on 10 years now with the University Police Department. So on the day-to-day -day shifts for our officers, you have day shift and you have night shift. It's usually about a 12 and a half to 13 hour day. So you have three days on, four days off. Um, within our department, we do have other uh, specified or special organizations or departments, divisions and a lot of those are set up. I'm in the training coordinator position, so I train up with the new guys whenever we have them and also provide additional training to our officers for their in-service every year and to make sure that we're staying on top of everything and with the times. 
The football field is the largest city on game days because there's no other city in West Virginia that large. There's more people here than there is any other city in West Virginia. You have the basketball games, we're making sure that people that aren't familiar with our area are coming and going and making sure they're safe and making sure that everything is easily accessible for anybody and everybody that wants to be here and have a good time and make sure we're safe doing it. Um, so one of the most important things when you see police officers, it doesn't mean there's always something bad happening. We are there to make sure you're safe and us being seen, us being a part of that school, not only are we more familiar with the buildings if something did happen, but we're there to prevent any crimes from happening too. So come say hello to us, come say hi. We are your friends and we're here to make sure that everybody's safe. So it means a lot to us when we get to interact with students on a good situation instead of always being called to a bad situation. Whenever we're talking to smaller children or either teenage children when it comes to game days, we're usually separated away from our parents, we're separated from our guardians or whoever they're with. It's important to know the different in individuals' information. Uh, your grandparents' real name instead of just Pappy and Grammy or mom and dad knowing the real full name. Uh, memorizing cell phone numbers, memorizing phone numbers and addresses of not just grandpa, just not grandma, so maybe their phone died. So you know multiple numbers of people that can get a hold of. So mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, everybody you can possibly know, phone numbers to call in case there was a situation in an emergency where mom and dad couldn't answer questions or you got separated away from mom and dad. So that's really good to have and always know the police officers there to help. Flag us down, we'll try our best to help you out no matter what we have to do. So as growing up in Southern West Virginia, I grew up with my dad being a conservation officer and I had an uncle who was a federal conservation officer and even a grandpa that was a magistrate of the county. Um, it wasn't just seeing them in the uniform or anything like that. It was seeing how the community reacted to them and the thankful for them and what they provided to the community and being a part of it. I really didn't take that step until after I had children and I saw instead of you know griping about the problem or talking about the problem that you could do out there and make a difference. And I saw the, what my family members that I put on the badge before had done to the, for the communities and just wanted to be a part of that. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a tour of our university police facilities and we're gonna meet a lot of people that make the behind the scenes that make everything go around and our support staff, not only that with our command staff to make sure that everything goes the way it needs to be. This is Bruce, he's in charge of our evidence and our evidence tech here. Uh, Bruce, would you like to tell him what you do? Yeah, we preserve the evidence that the officers collect at the scene. We store it, catalog it, ensure the chain of custody, send it to the lab. Just whatever's required is what we do. So this is our booking room. We don't only just fingerprint anybody that's a suspect or under arrest. We also do applicants for community policing. Anybody needs help, any time a background needs to be done for a job or a career. Um, everybody always sees the ink pads, but everything's advanced from that, so we do electronical. So if we go through, this is asking for my right thumb, and we have a little foot pedal right here. And if I go ahead and click that and put my thumb on there, and just roll right through. It'll show my fingerprint right there on the screen. Hi everybody. Welcome to the Communications Center. Um, just to tell you a little bit about what we do here. We're the, basically the support system for our police officers in the campus community. Um, we get all kinds of calls, anything from highly critical to what time does an event start. Um, we have over 1,800 cameras throughout campus. We don't sit here and monitor them, but we do um, access them when we get a call in a certain area. We have a system called Live Safe, where you can do what's called Safe Walk. So if you're walking from downtown late at night and um, you're afraid, you can send a link to, to excuse me, to your friend. 
and they can watch you in real life until you get safely to your destination. We get all kinds of alarms in here. Um, anything from fire alarms, trouble alarms, to panic and duress alarms. Um, they're all monitored here and then we would dispatch an officer, fire, um, whatever is needed. If you find yourself um, in need of help, any kind of help, if you're scared, if someone's following you, or you're, you're just feeling uneasy, don't ever be afraid to call 911. They're there to help you um, and someone will get to you as soon as possible. So we are here at the University Police Station in our training room. Um, our officer training never, never ends. When you're a new officer, we get in here, we start from the ground up before you go on the road and get you trained. Uh, you usually spend about three weeks with me before you start a rotation with our shifts uh, until we can get you to the academy. Once you get back from the academy, we are going to send you on a three-month uh, training FDO process as a field training officer. But then your train never off, never ends. Um, we do have a job that's life or death at one point in time. Uh, if you think about a doctor can go to school for eight years, well, our officers go to the academy for 16 weeks, but we build a block um, every time we get an opportunity. Any kind of training there is within the area or if we can do within the house. We have a lot of defensive tactics instructors. I'm the verbal de-escalation instructor. First aid, whatever it is, we like to cover all of our bases and make a well-rounded officer. This is Lori Burke. She's one of our investigators here. Lori, would you like to introduce yourself and tell me what you do? Yes. Um, I actually retired my badge last year. I've been here 25, going on 26 years. Um, I'm a retired lieutenant, and I stayed on in a civilian position, and I still work in the investigations unit here. They follow up on cases that are forwarded to us um, from officers that have handled calls on shifts, uh, especially if they're on midnight shift it's kind of hard to follow up with people during those hours um, but we preserve body cam for incidents we review video surveillance footage off of um, the cameras on campus um, i do a lot of background checks for employment for um, you know officers or dispatchers or anybody that um, has applied to to work here so things of that nature my name is sherry st Clair. i'm the chief of West Virginia University Police Department. We're here today at our department, West Virginia University Police Department. So our department, your qualifications here is either you have an associate's degree or equal hours, or if you have prior law enforcement and corrections or bailiffs or along those lines, some kind of enforcement. Um, then you also, once you get hired onto us, you gotta go to the State Police Academy, which is 16 weeks down in Charleston you go down there and learn all the fundamentals of law enforcement and everything. Once you complete that, you come back to our department and you do a 12-week FTO program, which is a field training officer program, when you learn how we do things at WVU. So the day-to-day -day for me is more taking meetings, making sure our officers get what they need to do their jobs. I meet a lot of people, making sure that our department's out there and we're servicing the community here at WU and getting what they need. Our regular officers, their day-to-day -day is a little bit different. They are out there taking the calls, being in the community every day, meeting people, taking whatever comes about, um, and whatever the university community needs, we're usually there. The hardest part of my job is probably not knowing the most exciting and hardest part of the day is you never know what's going to happen. Every day is different in our life. When you come to work and you think you have your day planned out, it usually gets interrupted and something happens. So it is a good bonus that everything is, but two, it's hard to plan out your day and just never know what's coming. So a lot of our differences is our clientele. Our clientele is the people that we service the most are students. They're young community, they're young people. They're 18 to 22, 23, someone there. We do have some professors and staff, but most of ours that we deal with is a, a young clientele. Um, so I've been in law enforcement for 28 years. I came from a family of law enforcement. Once I got in here, I enjoyed being with the other officers. I enjoy going out in the community and meeting people. So our biggest thing with people in school, even young kids, don't be afraid to come up to us. 
We always like kids to come up. A lot of times we carry stickers and stuff like that. We like to talk to you. We want you to know what we do and we're here for you. If you get in trouble, you get lost, don't hesitate to come up. If you have a problem or see something, always be approachable to us. We're here for you. So one of the things I think young adults don't know, or kids younger that don't know is, you always need to wear your seatbelt when you're in a vehicle. Uh, even when you're in the back seat, until you're 18, you need to have that seatbelt on. And when you're in the front seat, you always have to have that seatbelt on. I think three tips young adults, young kids need to know is be aware of strangers. If you don't know someone, don't approach them, don't go with them or anything. You just don't know who they are. Uh, one of the other big thing is if you're on social media, is be aware there's a lot of people out there that are trying to lure you away. The other big thing would be like if you're in, if you're going across the street, make sure you're always abiding by traffic laws. Look at your crosswalks. Um, make sure you're going with traffic and stuff for your safety. For me, being the first female WVU police chief was a big, big honor. Um, one of the things that, that I've seen is little, little girls, girls coming up through there that want to go into law enforcement to make sure they know they can go all the way to the top. When I started, I never thought I would go all the way to the top. You just never know where your career is going to take you, uh, and it is possible. It wasn't all that super cool. I learned all kinds of stuff about the University Police Department I, I didn't know before. Well, we'll be right back here tomorrow with more great Energy Express content, and we hope you will too. We'll see you then.